Wilson, thank you for joining me. Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Let's continue our theological audit on Watchtower Study magazine for October 2019, study article 43. We're up to paragraph 7. We'll start through 9. We'll start with the question. We haven't got through this yet because what they're causing is a conflict of interests. They're making um, spirit, time, giving time to spirituality more important than giving time to work. So let's see again what they have to say. What do you learn from the experience of an elder named David? Consider the example of David, a hard-working elder who lives in the United States. He describes himself as having been a dedicated employee. He was promoted within the company he worked for and even received national recognition in his field of work. Now, that's, that's a blessing, isn't it? There's no other way you could just describe that but simply as a blessing. That's the responsibility of a husband and a father to be successful in his career at work. At the time, I thought that these rewards were evidence of Jehovah's blessing, David said. Well, poor old, I've got news for you, David. They were. They were. And now what the Watchtower is going to do is cast a shadow of doubt on success within your career. They're going to undermine being successful in your career. And you've got to be very careful of this. You can't fall for these tactics because they're trying to recruit people into the cart ministries. Now, let's go and show you how intelligent some of these cart people are. This is the War on the Watchtower channel. Um, this lady's really nice. She's an ex-Jehovah Witness herself. Um, I haven't seen this. We'll run it. Um, I'm so sure it's going to be the usual old scenario of the um, Jehovah Witnesses just being a nuisance of themselves. Um, we'll, we'll run this and see what we get. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Back on the walkway. Um, I left a prolly somewhere yesterday, so I'm heading, uh, I'm heading to go and see um, if it's there. We get a rail ticket. And, uh, you know, I don't go out of my way for these Jehovah Witnesses. If they happen to be on my route, then I crash their cart. But I, I don't go out seeking to find them. It's, it's not too hard in this town because, I mean, there's so many congregations. English, Polish, uh, I don't know, whatever else there is. It's so many different languages in this town. And uh, they kind of have their different areas. This tends to be English around here. Ray and Marion's time of day. Well, there's another lady there that I've not met before, I don't think. Hello there, Jehovah Witnesses. How are you today? How are you, Ray? The, the Jehovah Witness who, who never watches JW broadcasting because he's got no internet. He's only got an old flip phone. Look, Ray's abandoned his cart. Ray's off, Marion's off with hers. I remember meeting Marion one time many, many years ago before I became a Jehovah Witness. Because even in this multicultural society, multicultural town such as Luton, there are little pockets of whiteness. Pubs where you're not welcome and cafes and tea shops where you're not welcome. She used to work in a tea shop where people of colour were not welcome. She worked there and then she'd go and sit in the Kingdom Hall on a Sunday. And after I became a Jehovah Witness, I recognised her from the tea shop. I'm not saying she's a closet racist or anything, but hey, she um, she was very very much at home in that that shop environment. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll catch them. Look, they've just popped round the corner. Look, you see him. Ray's already back at his post. I'll catch him on the way back. Bye for now. Why do they run? Why do these Jehovah Witness people run? I'll tell you why. Because they're not theologically qualified. They're just recruiting people. That's all they're doing. Now, this professional person in this, article, this part of the article is going to be encouraged to do that kind of thing because they're casting a severe shadow of doubt on success. I thought that these rewards were evidence of Jehovah's blessing, David said. Now, let's look at the rewards. He was a dedicated employee. Tick. He was promoted within the company. Tick. 
He worked for and even received national recognition in his field of work. Tick! Now the shadow of the doubt. At that time, I thought that these rewards were evidence of Jehovah's blessing. Now at that time, this is, this is before he bends towards theological deception. And then they write, David said, but were they? I'd love to know the mind of the people writing this. It's just diabolical. Incredible. David began to see warning signs that his work was having a negative effect on his friendship with Jehovah. At congregation... Now, if David's work was having a negative effect on his friendship with Jehovah, that's David, not the job. That's David's fault. If David's unable or decided that through indoctrination, his success and responsibilities towards that success are undermining his relationship with Jehovah who would be helping him to have the success, then he's gone into deception. He's gone into theological deception. He's been deceived. It's actually called theological abuse. He's theologically abusing himself and undermining his life. Meetings and even in the ministry, I found myself thinking about problems at work, he says. Well, that's not uncommon, is it? Think about problems. Um, I think about problems <laughs> and try and solve them. See, when you're thinking about problems, that's your opportunity to try and solve them. This is what these meetings are supposed to be helping people to do. Not only to, well, they don't teach you to know Christ, right? And apparently they don't help you to solve problems because David's problems at work should have been progressively resolved. At this type of level, I would say David's mind was a lot more powerful than what this article's portraying. I was making a lot of money, but I became increasingly stressed, and my marriage was suffering. Now, I just want to challenge this. What's more important? To live poor and have stress or to be financially well off and have stress? I want to ask that question again. What's, what's, what predicament would you prefer to be in? To be financially stable and have stress or to be poor and struggling and have stress? What would be your preference? It's a no-brainer, isn't it? It's a no-brainer. But again, they're undermining prosperity here. The ability to make an income. Many males today, many religious males, suffer from a religious form of passivity. Their beliefs cause them to undermine their ability to get out and make an income. There's millions of them out there. You ask some of these women that are married to them. You'll hear the woman going to work, the woman goes to work, and the husband sits at home. Why? This, the spirit of this, it's a demonic spirit that undermines the masculinity of the male. David realized that he needed to review his priorities. I made a firm decision to correct my situation, he says. David wanted to reorganize his work schedule, and he presented his plan to his employer. The result? Now listen, they're going to undermine now. They're going to undermine the employer. They're going to assault the integrity of the employer. Because I don't believe the person of this calibre who offers a plan would not be able to negotiate this plan. And there's no mention of any negotiation or anything like that Usually people of this caliber will come down to some kind of sound agreement. But no, David just lost his job. David lost his job. No, that's not rational or reasonable at this caliber. We're talking about a nationally, a nationally accredited, recognized professional. Oh, no, no, he just lost his job. No, you can see this is, this is, 
extreme fanaticism, religious fanaticism. They're undermining his career. Now they're undermining his employer. David lost his job. How did he respond? The very next day, I applied to serve as a continuous auxiliary pioneer, he said. Now, where would that sit with the wife? Come on, let's get real here. This is propaganda in its highest form. This is theological abuse at its highest. Not many of you people know what theological abuse is, but it should be a crime. It should be no different to sexual abuse because this is completely undermined psychologically the power that people need to get out and make a professional life for themselves. In one sentence, David lost his job. Rubbish, David lost his job. David, this is what happens to a lot of these people, um, they get possessed with thinking that you have to serve Jehovah to have a um, right standing with him. That's not right at all. That's not true, true at all. David said to Elijah, I've got 70 odd or so, so many other prophets, mate. You're just, it's up to you if you want to be one or not. And it's the same today. David threw away a whole career to become a janitor. Does that make sense? No. It's, it's, it's theological abusive propaganda that's making the values of life to be bent towards the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of the Jehovah Witnesses, more than being, say, the President of the United States. They may as well say the pre President of the United States, because of his stress, stood down um, no, he put in a request to be able to worship more. They, they've sacked him. The Congress has sacked him. And now he's a janitor. That's what, that's what the mentality of this is. And I've seen men do this and women do this. And the regret when they come to their senses, the regret is, is it's, it's, it's very, very sad to think that there's an organization out there, a religious organization, encouraging this horrible, undermining mentality. To support themselves, David and his wife started doing janitorial work. After a while... Okay, so they've immediately got into financial trouble. Why would David have done that? He began regular pioneering, and his wife eventually joined him in the pioneer work. So rather than say, they're not going to tell you about the wife being upset and all the rest of it, the wife's had to give in and join him in the pioneer work. Can you see the hamstringing, the, the Achilles tendon being cut here, as it were? Can you see the caving in of these people to this idea of pioneer work? Terrible. Now, to get a proper perspective on this, I've typed in XJW Pioneer in YouTube. And look, look at all the videos. There is just relentless amounts of video on these people that were pioneers that have come out and, and awoken to it. Um, here's one, an XJW elder. It only goes for three minutes. I'll run it, but there's a whole viewers, please. Watch some of these videos. Oh my goodness me. You would be, you would be amazed. It's fascinating listening to the stories of these people. Now there's somebody here going on a pioneer stroll. Remember the pioneer stroll. Maybe we should watch this just for those that are doing the stroll. There was another short one though. Where was that? Um, just we've got limited time. We'll well, let's do the pioneer stroll just to see what these people used to do. This is Nita. This My is family Adrian's sponsor channel. Her through World Vision. Election we'll skip the ad. <coughs> Well, hello everyone. 
I think those folks over there are Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm about to find out. I'm just walking around the park. Let's see if they would be interested in having a little chat. Talking the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Are you guys Jehovah's Witnesses? Yes. Oh, I have questions for you guys. Yes, I talked to you before. Yeah? yeah. I don't remember you, but um, yeah. I have some more questions if you don't mind. Um, well, last time I remember we were having, well, mainly you were having a conversation, <laughs> you know, and, um, and there was really nothing. To talk about, so nothing at all. Do you remember anything we talked about? Yeah, pretty much. You know, you, you were bringing up like um, stuff about the assembly. I remember you were telling me about music that had been composed and oh yeah. Composed Did you look it up? Um, no, honestly, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I figured. Mm -hmm. Why is it though that um, Jehovah's Witnesses? Whenever you guys come across information that are critical of your organization, you guys immediately dismiss it. Why is that? They're very uncomfortable. They're not theologically educated. They're outpedaling their propaganda and they're on the run. Watch. Again, the Jehovah Witnesses are on the run. It was for my own... I have bad memory. <laughs> That's why I was asking her. I no, no, but I would prefer if you really when you record someone, you actually, privacy purposes, you have to ask them first if they would allow it. It's only legal to ask a person if, you, if they'd allow it. To really? Be yeah. Are you sure about that? Even in interviews, even when they're being interrogated, they're supposed to be made aware of this. Now, what that woman's doing, she's undermining the fact. Again, they undermine everything. They're nuisances to the communities. But this woman's undermining the fact that she's put herself out there as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not Jehovah. Whilst they're Jehovah Witnesses, Christianity is to get out and tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this woman's arguing the toss that you need to like any you need to make an interview if you want to come up and talk to us as it were. Well, I was an evangelist for nearly 15 years, and that was never the case. We, we used to spend three hours at a time speaking to people to help them understand and, and get abused and all. We got all this, but we never ran off like these people. I find it really, really, really unrepresentative of what the um, true idea of evangelism is. So, well, you know, the only other organization that says that are like Scientologists and Mormons. Yeah, other yeah, Christians are like, my, eh, it's for okay. For my personal privacy, just me, myself, not because of anyone else, I would prefer if you didn't. Well, if she wants privacy, she needs public, to get off the right? street. I know, I know. But, yeah, so the law doesn't protect people when they're in the public as but far as privacy. Me. I, don't know, so, I don't know if you've ever seen like prank videos on YouTube. Prank? They still have to, they still have to sign a, a form. Well, yeah, because th those are mon those people are making money off of it. So, yeah. It's still public, right? No, no. It's a difference. A We're in America. You guys should know all about the First well, Amendment. Well, excuse ourselves, okay? Have a wonderful day. So, you don't want to answer any questions? First Amendment. Thank you. I'd like to have you stop following us. Thanks. Oh, I was just walking around the park. Oh, okay. Keep going then. <laughs> Go for it. Well, I like the JW stroll. Oh, you can know. count more field service hours that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You guys really should look into the Australian Royal Commission, though. Okay. And see what's been happening over there. Okay, I'm going to call the police I'm, if you No, that would be awesome the... if you want to do that, which I know you won't, but you could if you want. Could you please go? I'm just strolling. This is like okay. public. Okay. <laughs> oh, there they go. This is what. We call the JW Stroll, although now they're walking a little faster because an apostate is in their midst. Satan is right behind their butt, so they're picking up the, uh, the stroll. I know who you are. The problem... Yeah, the thing that I find difficult with the Jehovah Witnesses is 
they're trained now not to communicate when it's not on their terms. They're trained to not to communicate when it's not on their terms. Now David signing himself up for this. This professional man, nationally recognised in the United States. Do you know how much of an accomplishment that is? And the Jeho the Watchtower, these guys, are encouraging people to get out and do this. Professional people. And the Australian Royal Commission have is that you guys have a two witness rule that protects uh, pedophiles. You know, the elders don't report it to the authorities, and that's the now, problem. Now, this woman's threatened to call the police. All right, you well, guys say, let's leave it in Jehovah's hands. If you've been sexually he will take abused care of it. by the Jehovah right? Witnesses or anyone in this organization, the world. call the police. Look up the Australian Royal Commission, and buddy. report it. Case 29. And that's that. Well, uh, that's an act. Well, we'll leave him there. We'll leave Adrian there. But I just wanted to show you again what they're trying to encourage people to do and how they're making out how wonderful it is no 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 this couple chose to do secular work that is looked down on by many but the type of work who 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 would look down on someone being a janet janitor like again again they're on what's the, it's a victim mentality a horrible victim mentality. I just want to remind you, um, if you have been sexually abused, and I say this with sensitivity, within the Jehovah Witnesses organization, please call your local police and report it. Please call your local police and report it. Um, there is another story in the news today. I think I'll find it for you. Uh, yep. A lady in Belfast Island. Just let me get past this. This woman. This is in Belfast Island. It's just come out on the 24th of December. Laura warning at her home in Rathcourt. A woman has called for an inquiry into sex crimes by Jehovah Witnesses after her Bible study class abuser was sentenced for subjecting her to years of abuse. This woman brought it to the police, the authorities, and he was sentenced. I want to repeat, this abuser was sentenced for subjecting her to years of abuse. Now, this could be you. And I say this with all sensitivity. If you are in the Jehovah Witnesses or any other religious organization, and you have been abused, please, please, I ask you, call the police. Now, Laura Waring, who has bravely waived her right to amnonymity, God bless her, revealed she's been contacted by other people who say they were also victims of abusers in the church in the Jehovah Witness Church. She's been contacted. The church has been dogged internationally by sex scandals involving the alleged abusers and major public inquiry was held into allegations in Australia. And if I show you my channel, I've been putting up a rerun of the Australian Royal Commission. These are all, I'm doing videos now as we speak, I'll show you. Getting up the Royal Commission for these poor victims that have suffered abuse, sexual abuse, rape in the Jehovah Witness Church. The church has been dogged internationally by sex scandals involving alleged abusers and major public inquiry was held into allegations in my country, Australia, where 1,006 unreported cases of sexual abuse to children were not reported to the authorities by this church. And you can watch, as I showed you, all these videos on the Australian Royal Commission on the channel or another channel called Jake Control, which I've shown in the videos. 
to get help. Please reach out to somebody and get help. Speaking moments after 77-year-old Charles, Charles Frederick Eric Loyal was given a suspended jail sentence, Laura told Sunday Life, It's a relief. You can't just forget about it and move on. It's a bit like a death. You don't get over it, but you learn to live with it. It's definitely a relief as it has definitely brought our family closer together because we have all been working towards the one thing. So don't take this um, unseriously, please. Take this very seriously. We'll try and get For through this ad. Find it with stays. Um, they have I'll just, and we can skip the ad. No, and that's over. So we'll leave that there. We'll go back to our article where the Watchtower is trying to undermine professional people from maintaining their careers and go do janitorial work, which apparently is looked down on by many. Well, I don't agree with that. Maybe the Jehovah Witnesses themselves look down on people that do janitorial work. But no, the normal person in life wouldn't do that. Why would they do that? work they are doing is not the most important thing for them. Even though their income has dropped to a tenth of what they were earning before, each month they have just what they need to cover their expenses. They want to give Jehovah priority and they have learned firsthand that he cares for those who put kingdom interests first. Now, they haven't told you, and I think I should, that God is not a God of partiality. God is not a God of partiality, and we will find a scripture for that. Um, okay, let's just put in partiality. Will we get anything? We may not. We got two. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this article is showing it's being partial. It's glorifying somebody doing janitorial work so that they get more time to serve Jehovah over and above a nationally recognized person in his field across the United States because he suffered some stress or it may have not been a blessing from Jehovah. That just does not ring true. It doesn't ring true. It can't ring true. That's 28 minutes. We'll come back to paragraph 10. How can we guard our heart? In the next session, this is Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me and bye for now. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like, um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, Get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one old life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.